SummerSlam, the tagline was, you'll never see it coming. And for a lot of us, we didn't see it coming. Except if you saw that they had released some new merch on WWE Shop a few hours before the SummerSlam show. But even if you saw a potential return, you did not receive that return in that way. But it's what you got. And over the past week plus, I've seen a lot of folks on the interwebs spreading scurrilous, scandalous, slanderous, outrageous, rudimentally, fundamentally flawed lies about Roman Reigns. That they love the fact that he's a heel now, and he's going to be the heel that they need. He is no heel. He is a baby face. I got news for you. And more importantly, you know it deep, deep down in the cackles of your heart that it's true. And I'll tell you what, I'll prove it to you. Not only is he a babyface, but there is 15 reasons why Roman Reigns is a babyface. And I'm going to give them to you now, so suck on this. Number 15, the man is married with five kids. Like, married to the same woman and has had a bunch of kids. A great family. And from all reports, is a wonderful husband and a wonderful father. Well, yes, that doesn't necessarily make him a megastar because he doesn't have the standard kind of nine kids by seven different women that I would seek out of a true big-time megastar. Still, when you think about it, you're teaching your kids that you want them to look up to good people. You can't do that with politics. You can't do that in the business world in a lot of cases. You look at somebody like Roman Reigns, he's a good family man. How could you possibly hate him for that? Number 14, although you could make an argument, this probably goes in the top three. But not only has he kicked leukemia's ass once, he's done it twice. Twice. What is wrong with people? Seeking out reasons to hate a guy that is a two-time cancer survivor. Not once, but twice. 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 What's hateable about that? The fact that he lived? That's why you hate him? Because he's been able to successfully defeat cancer twice? That makes him a heel? I don't think so. Unlucky number 13 on the list is a reason a lot of us should be able to relate to is the man has experienced COVID-related impacts in 2020. He had to make a tough and difficult choice for himself as WrestleMania was being built in parts around him in the title match against Goldberg to either do that or potentially put his health and his family's health at jeopardy by working for the company at a time where the outbreak was just starting and the pandemic was just beginning in this country. And he made the unselfish choice to say, you know what, I've got to do what's best for my personal health and my family. And some people might resent that, but what is there to hate about that? Seriously. If anything, you'd be able to relate to it. Because so many people are getting plowed by this freaking pandemic and what's happened in 2020. It's been a crappy enough year. That should make them instantly likable and relatable to all of you. Number 12, everybody likes to pretend like he got a rocket ship straight up his ass or something. And he didn't have to work hard or he didn't have to do anything like that. You know, this was a guy that goes back to the FCW days. This is a guy that when he debuted in the developmental territory in 2010, was going by the name of Roman Leake. Like, he's been with the company for a decade. He's worked his way up the ladder. You might not agree with everything, but the bottom line is sometimes you get opportunities, you take advantage of them, and that is what he does. That's not a reason to hate the guy. And he's been loyal to the company. He's been a good public soldier it, the most part, hasn't brought embarrassment to him or anything like that. Like, we talk about all these other guys that pay their dues. You act like Roman Reigns hasn't had life struggles. You act like Roman Reigns didn't have to bust his ass to get where the hell he is in WWE today. 11, when you talk about his SummerSlam return, one of the things that he called out was that he never lost that title. And he didn't. He was stripped. He had to surrender it. Like, that sucks. And as a character, if you translate that to real life, like, that's relatable. If anything, that is totally understandable in a wrestling business where we lack larger life characters. And more importantly, we lack relatable characters. Here's a guy that's saying, you know what? I was in this spot, had to make a tough decision, and there were consequences with that all the while. These two guys are battling at a big four pay-per-view for a belt that I never lost to either one of them. What the hell is there to hate about that? 
number 10 everybody should be able to agree on. The Retribution Faction took one look at Roman Reigns and the destruction and mayhem that he was leaving in his wake said, hey, he's on SmackDown. We don't want any part of that smoke. And as a result, they're going to be strictly on the Raw brand, which fewer people actually watch. So if you only watch SmackDown on Friday nights, you know what? You don't even have to see the stupid retribution angle ruin anything on the show. That's good news, isn't it? Thank you, Roman. Thank you, Roman. Number nine, Roman Reigns is a baby face. When you look at what's going on in our world today, you know, everybody comes from this place of absolutism and they have to be right and we just forgot about our humanity and caring for our fellow man and woman. But here's Roman Reigns coming out at payback after the first refs rolled out of the ring because the freaking ring collapsed. I'll tell me how that bump works, but that's apparently how it works. He comes and he's prepared. He brings along a second ref. When you talk about things that are likable and relatable about somebody, and somebody you would want to point your kids to and say, you know, that's somebody you should emulate. Roman Reigns is looking out for his co-worker and his fellow man by getting a second referee a pay-per-view payday. What is hateable about that? Number eight. He knows what The Fiend's been dealing with at times in his personal life. So he took one look, kicked him square in the testicles as nothing more than a preventative measure from one friend to another to save Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, the headache, the stress, the hassle of future child support court appearances, treatments, and payment arrangements. That is not hateable. Believe me, not hateable. Wish somebody would have done that to me many years ago. Square up with the good book and kick me square in the damn testicle. My bank account would be very thankful and the Thieves bank account will be very thankful because of the friend-like thing that Roman Reigns did for him unselfishly Sunday at Payback. Number seven, a lot of you are pointing to what happened with the match at Payback and you listen to clowns like JD and these other fools, these hucksters. The bottom line is, he kicked Bray in the testicles, save him future's child support obligations. Great friends do that, looking out for one another. But more importantly, that meant that the fiend was protected. He pinned Braun Strowman. He pinned the right guy. Who cares about Braun Strowman? A lot of you hate him anyway. And if anything, he's the dang heel. So why are you sitting there calling Roman Reigns a heel for doing this when he pinned the right guy here? Why? Number six reason Roman Reigns is a babyface should again resonate and matter to each and every single one of you. Roman looked at the landscape Sunday night at Payback and he said, you know what? Let's wrap this up kind of early. Ain't no reason for this show to go three and a half hours. These fans have got lives. I've got a life. So it was over by like 9.30 something, two and a half hours. What a novel concept. Respecting the fans' time. Not going longer just because you can, when you certainly don't need to. That's right, Roman, wrap that shit up. And believe me, myself and everybody else is very thankful to you for that. Number five is an important one. It's a key one. Because you see a lot of these marks and a lot of these melts or bots out there trying to point to what's going on in the matches and stuff as evidence that Roman has turned heel. When the exact opposite is true. Tell me one rule that he is broken, either at SummerSlam or Payback. Now look. It's time for you to admit that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. At SummerSlam, he came out and did what? The match was already over. There's no rules to break there. And the man had a rage and a fury and been gone for four and a half, almost five months. It's actually kind of forgivable. So whatever he did afterwards, you know what? That's wrestling. That's the biz. And furthermore, he didn't actually interfere in the match while it was going on. The title change was actually still able to happen. And then you look at payback. Oh, he nutshotted the fiend. I've already explained why that's a babyface move. Oh, he used a chair. Not only did he bring his own chair, his own weapon, to save the company expenses at a time where everybody's trying to tighten their belts a little bit because of the pandemic impacts. Being the team player that he is, he only utilized a weapon that was allowed by the rules of the match. 
the whole, well, he showed up halfway through and that's stupid. Nobody says you're obligated to be there the entire time. He still showed up. He still competed. He worked smarter versus harder. And I realize in this country especially, we like to insult and belittle intelligence at every step that we possibly can. But we sure as hell are not going to do it on my watch when it comes to Roman Reigns. And even when you look at the chair shots to Braun Strowman, if anything, you would say, what did he have against the mat? Because half of the good, clean shots he got in with the chair that's supposed to go to Braun went to the damn ring mat anyways. He did not break any rules. He did not get any outside interference. He got none of that. 100% legit by the book as the rules are laid out. That, ladies and gentlemen, is babyface stuff, not heel stuff. Number four should be a significant, huge reason in a lot of your minds. Brought Paul Heyman back. Paul Heyman now has a purpose. Paul Heyman is now back on WWE television and back on the show where he frankly belongs more and has always been a better fit. And that's SmackDown. Because we know he didn't do crap as the lead writer in Raw. <laughs> He's out now. They're unemployed. And at a time where folks are cutting freaking costs and expenses and trying to tighten their belt, Roman saw an opportunity to bring somebody back into the fold and give them a big-time spot to apply their craft. And that's what he did here with Paul Heyman. And as a result now, you are going to get to listen to Paul Heyman on the microphone every week or two. Why exactly would you hate Roman Reigns for that? Why? Number three should be something that falls into the traditional bucket when it comes to baby faces. You look for men of integrity, stand-up guys, guys that say what they mean, mean what they say, that follow through on what they promise. Well, Roman's always already done that several times now with what his shirt says. The shirt says, wreck everyone and leave. It's truth in advertising. How nice is that? In a country, on an internet world, where lies are prevalent, where lies seem to get way more traction than facts and truth actually do, here's a guy coming along that says, I'm going to wreck everyone in league, and then freaking does it! He's a man of his word, a man of integrity. That is a hero, not a villain, folks. Number two, where is the WWE allowed things to go down the crapper because they were afraid of doing something different with John Cena and as a result his decade of doom of destruction wreaked havoc all throughout the WWE product, the WWE roster. Roman Reigns was open enough to say let's listen to the fans, let's sit there and figure out how to do things a little differently before it's too late and he has given you what a lot of you were asking for. You wanted a character change splat out, you got a character change and you know what I'm loving every single minute of it we used to call him the Samoan Cena, Cena 2.0. Well, unlike Cena, he had the courage to go with it and change his damn character, and he's going to be better off in the company. He's going to be better off as a result of it. The number one reason, the number one reason that Roman Reigns is a babyface, not a heel, is because hardcore fans and so many of the dirt sheets and wrestling journalists are calling him a heel. We already know how wrestling is. The bad guys get cheered, the good guys get booed. Well, here's a guy in Roman that's just coming in, arriving, wrecking everyone, and leaving. Man of integrity. Not sitting there saying suffer and suck a tash or anything like that. I've already given you 14 other reasons why the guy is not hateable. Therefore, making him likable, relatable, making him a baby face. But the most important one of all is, now that the hardcore community and the marks and the freaking dirt sheets and the wrestling journalists are calling him a heel, that instantly makes him a face because we actually had fans there in the arena, they'd be cheering him, not booing him, because that's what they do for a baby face. Furthermore, on top of all that, for myself at least personally, because of all these people talking about now that he's a heel, and they have reasons to hate him, even though they're not going to hate him, because how could you hate Roman Reigns? You have at least 15 reasons why Roman Reigns is a baby face, including this one. Most importantly of all to me is the fact that if it can aggravate everybody, spitting some hot fire facts and truth here, that because they think he's a heel, if anything, that makes him a face and a greater baby face, then all the more power to it. So there you have it. 15 reasons Roman Reigns is a baby face, 
Not a deal. 15 of them. I've just given you the evidence. Case closed. Fatal knockout. Over. I win. And sure, some of you are going to take to the comments with your flaming keyboard fingers on fire and are going to rage and rant away about how I'm off my rocker and everything else. No, 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 no. As is so often the case, hashtag Shlug Daddy is right, and eventually all of you will just catch up with the Joneses here. Sometimes it's hard to be the innovator, sometimes it's hard to be ahead of the curve, but ultimately, that's why you watch OTRS Central, because it's not the wrestling show you want, it's the wrestling show you need. Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, hero number one in all of professional wrestling. Suck on that.